Hello everybody, and today's topic we're going to be talking about what is risk within cybersecurity. Now, some people might say that risk is easy to understand when it comes to cybersecurity because you'll look at a product, you look at the software, and you'll just understand the key concepts of well, here's the potential flaw, here's where somebody could get it, and how it all fits together. So in today's topic, I'm going to be breaking it down into two fundamental to uh, topics. So that is acceptable risk and unnecessary risk. There, I normally break it down into these two for clients. I normally break it down into these two categories just because it can be quite a technology bar barrier for somebody coming in to understand how it can affect their business. And depending on who you're talking to, as in like the C-level, you may want to break through them and make them understand what these risk categories are so firstly let's look at acceptable risk so for me acceptable risk is when you are taking a software or using the software within your business and you are accepting that there may be risks involved with using the software or presenting the software however you sometimes this can be quite a tricky topic to get around um, for example a client comes in and they say they want to scope out all their assets and make sure that they're basically protecting themselves that much so when you go through their infrastructure you find that they are hosting a WordPress site to promote their business as anyone was pro probably doing these days using WordPress however when I'm this is not a bash on WordPress or anything like that but because it is the most successful and popular contact management system it is rife with people trying to target it so when you are adopting wordpress into your uh, into your business you must fully understand that it opens you to these things so let me just uh, so like let's say the pros uh, uh we'll break it down into this like category for you so let's say WordPress. We want to use WordPress. So what are the pros when it comes to cybersecurity? Cyber okay, it has authentication. That's great. It has auth, so we don't have to build our own auth. It's a CMS, so it allows people to post content. Um, yep, and there's also plugins uh so there's you can have a custom dev come in or you can just use marketplace so now let's think about the cons so zero days because you're not the developer of wordpress obviously wordpress is an external company they can have a zero day just like as much as anyone else can so this is um the way you gotta think about it is this this is like the extreme end so they have zero days okay you you can also install a malicious uh install a bad plugin um or the plugin has vulns so like the plugin has a vulnerability um that is patched now or if you install the plugin ages ago and you're not like constantly making sure that you're on the latest and greatest version then there can be vulnerabilities that come up so this is what i will call an acceptable risk you have the pros of like content management system authentication already built into the platform there's plugins already like custom dev or you can just use the marketplace to your advantage and then obviously then it has the cons that you're not the actual developer, so there can be zero days. Um, and also you can install a malicious plugin or you can have a plugin that over time has a CVE out um, and you just don't have enough time to update before a proof of concept or somebody starts exploiting. So that is what I would class as an acceptable risk to your company because you are getting something probes for yourself um, and also you're getting some cons there as well. However, if you wanted to move forward, you could obviously put WordPress out depending on if you class it as a too big of a risk for your company. Um, there is 
companies out there that just uh, either just have a flat CMS or they use a static site generator. Um, for example, Hugo um, is the one that I use personally for my blog site. Um, so I just like to have that. Because um, whenever you have PHP or any sort of um, like server side rendered language, there's obviously always that takes that they can be vulnerability. So on the other side, on unnecessary risks, this is where it can be quite hard to scope out. So I will use an example of a client that I've talked to in the past. So they um, had a custom application that was running on their server and their server certificate expired. So they were getting obviously server certificate expired on all the clients. So I was brought in to uh, fix the issue. I was just told to fix it as, as quickly as possible. So obviously I just installed Nginx and Servbot, and then I just passed it over to the application that I configured to listen on the loopback device. However, when I was debugging um, why the application was having some issues, I saw that MongoDB, the database that they were using, was listening on all listeners. So as the security profession I am, I brought this to their attention, the saying, by the way, you're exposing your database to the internet. I don't think you should be doing that. Um, it's unnecessary for you to be doing that. And they turned around and said to me, well, we create offsite backups and they connect remotely into the MongoDB you do the backups that's what they do so i said instead of that what you could do is obviously set up ip tables or firewall rules rules to only allow the ip address of that user to come in or the offsite backup ip to come in to the uh, the mongodb port um however this is where it got complicated they were actually offsiting back up to the business owner's home address and he had a dynamic IP address. So this is why they never did that in the first place. So then I turned around and said, well, instead of doing that, then how about you just create a VPN? So then he, v uh, the, the server that's running at home has a VPN connection in and then you don't need to expose anything. And then I just got turned around saying too complicated it's too complicated it's just just don't do it so so to my knowledge this has never been fixed um there's only so much you can do as a person so obviously keep telling them about it but uh, in the in the end it's obviously that business's decision to make the call on stuff that you are advising them about however i wasn't brought in to do the security i was just brought in to obviously do the certificate make sure they're all back up and running and making money again. That's what I did. However, this is a classic case of unnecessary risk. So you don't need MongoDB uh, pointing to the internet, allowing for anyone to remotely connect. Um, I also did look at the authentication logs for MongoDB and there was a literally hundreds of different IP addresses connecting all around the world and just brute forcing the server so very unnecessary this is a classic case of unnecessary risk however please keep in mind that these are just examples so the key topic that i want you to take away from this video is understanding if you're a business owner if you're a self-hoster if you're a hobbyist understanding that everything that you decide to run has either a risk associated with it. things that are outside your control you can't just be a or like a doom and gloom about it saying that everything's gonna have a zero day so i'm not gonna run anything i can't that's not how businesses function nowadays you have to have a website you have to be on the internet somewhere to get traction so you have to have these two but two types of risk acceptable and unnecessary so acceptable 
is something that you can just accept that your business has that risk to do so and then unnecessary means it's just completely avoidable don't need to have that risk a part of your business but like i said the key topic is making those conversations don't just be like okay i've i've got to get this business uh up and running so i'm just gonna steamroll ahead and just go straight into wordpress it's just to make you aware that you need to have these conversations because in doing so will make you more of a security minded business and especially for 2023 because we're only just starting this year and 2022 was full of breaches and and third party breaches and supply chain attacks and this is where we're probably seeing the shift go from just bots out on the internet from attacking things to now being like get your malicious code or get your code into a code base and then attack it that way businesses hope you enjoyed this video if you didn't you can also hit the other button the dislike button or you can hit the like button if you liked it please comment on this video um just because i like to get people's thoughts on acceptable risk and unnecessary risk that they see out there uh, these are the two examples that i normally go with um however if not hit the subscribe and see you in the next one